Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make the inside of your bowling alley, including the foyer slash greeting area, where you pay for your bowling sessions, lanes, shoes, all of that. I will also show you how to make the restaurant, food, drink area just off to the side. I'll also show you how to make the small arcade that comes along with our bowling alley as well, with claw machines and arcade machines and a little air hockey table. I'll also show you how to make all of the lanes of your bowling alley, including seating area, ball return area, the scorekeeping device, all of this that you have seen on the screen so far. Now, of course, to make all of this, you will have to have the outside of your bowling alley already made. If you have happened to click on this video and you haven't made the outside of your bowling alley, don't worry, I've got your back. If you want to make the outside of the bowling alley, please check out the card system description below and the top of the comment section for the part one of this tutorial. This is a part two. You need part one to do part two. Again, card system, description below, and the top of the comment section. It will look exactly like how I showed you on screen. Once you have that first part made, we can now continue on to this part. So without any further ado, let's make the inside of our bowling alleys. I hope that you're ready for some fun. Let's get started. So now all of that's out of the way, we can finally head inside of our bowling alley. Ah, vast nothingness. As you may have noticed, the only change that I have made in between part one and now is that I have added some torches around the bowling alley just to keep the place nice and bright, as we won't be adding ceiling lights until later on. Here are all of the materials that we are going to be starting out with, ladies and gentlemen. Please do make sure that you have access to all of those materials and enough of them as well. These are going to make most of our bowling alley, so they are all very, very important. Now that we each have all of those, we can begin. Step one, ladies and gentlemen, the first thing that we want to do is we want to create the entrance to our bowling alley. The entrance way is kind of like a big glass cube that is an intermediary between the outside world and all of the fun stuff in here. To make this, we are going to take this red concrete block here, we're going to follow it all the way up to the top of the ceiling, and this block is what we are going to extend towards us. I want you to place six red concretes extending towards the back of the alley. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I want you to join that block down to the ground. Do the same on the opposite side, so the exact same red concrete, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then join that down to the ground. So this one here. Perfect. What we then want to do is join them together at the top to create the box shape. We then want to place five rows of glass coming inwards from both sides. One, two, three, four, five. And we're going to stick red concretes on the end and one, two, three, four, five, and we're gonna stick a red concrete on the end, extending up to the top of the frame. We're going to fill these windows in using some black stained glass paint. So this is a decent amount of glass. We want to be able to see everything around us as we are walking into the alley. Additionally, we want to fill these sides in as well, using glass as well, so we'll be able to walk in, we'll be able to see the arcade area, the little mini restaurant, all sorts of stuff. So, like this. Now, this is optional. You may want to destroy in the ground where the glass is and place red concrete instead. I personally am going to do it because I just think it breaks up the environment a little bit. But that's just my thoughts and feelings. You might feel as though that you quite like it blending into the birch floor, which is perfectly valid, of course. Now, moving into here... Oh, well, first... We want to give the impression that this is like a glass sliding door of some sort, so you might want to add some glass, like left and right, just like this, on this big entrance hole. 
Inside of here, we want to have some carpet. So the carpet is it's just going to be red carpet, and it's pretty much just going to sit directly in the middle of the floor. We're going to try our best to not really obstruct anything uh, as we move around the room here. So pretty much just kind of like framing it a little bit like this. Um, you might want to add some potted plants. That's what we've got the white glazed terracotta for. Perhaps next to the entrance, maybe like here and here. Addition, or maybe like you could place them in the corners, or both, or whatever you like. Really, you know, it's it's just an option. You might want to kind of like spruce, or maybe shall I say, oak this place up a little bit. Haha, <laughs> it'd make more sense if I use spruce leaves. Then, then we'd be sprucing up. Anyway, so this is kind of like the entrance area sorted out, ladies and gentlemen. As I mentioned, this is the first thing that you're going to encounter as you walk into the alley. Now, the next thing that we're going to encounter is going to be, as we walk in, we're going to have the place that, where you would pay, of course, if you wanted to do some bowling. And it's also the place that you get some shoes. We take the left and right hand sides of this building that we've just made, and we place eight glass extending towards the back of the build from the corners. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we stuck red concrete on the end. I'd also advise placing red concrete underneath the glass just to, again, it kind of just creates a nice barrier that I quite like. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then red concrete on the end, and red concrete's underneath, of course, as I mentioned, like that. There we go. So, this is what we're working with at the moment. The next thing that we want to do is on the left and right sides here, we want to leave a gap of three in the ground. One, two, three, and then you want to stick red concrete. So, one, two, three, red concrete. Join the red concretes together, left to right like this. You then want to extend the red concretes inwards. One, two. One, two. You want to extend them upwards by two. One, two. One, two. You want to join them together at the top, like this. But you kind of also want to create the same shape here that we have on the back on the front. So you want to do like one, two, and extend across, and like one, two. So we're kind of creating, it kind of looks like like the iron from Monopoly. <laughs> if you if you guys have that in that version, that the like iron piece, except it's red. So that's kind of what we want to have. We want to create two entrances, one on the right side here, and one on the left side on the opposite side. So that's going to be how we get in and out. And in addition to that, you can like connect it at the bottom in the middle and place some white concrete on top of it. Now, on the back of the build here, this is going to be where we get all the shoes. So we're just going to stick a load of item frames in here, and you can stick all different colours of shoes in it if you like. But in the interest of like keeping inventory space, I just have the one particular pair. Also on the back of the build, whilst we're here, we are going to have a few stalls, which is going to be made out of red concretes and weighted pressure plates. So those are just stalls that you can kind of like perch yourselves on to uh, just put your shoes on. That's pretty much all uh, that is there for. Um, I'm going to have a rug as well. There's just going to be a rug just in front of this counter space here. I think I'm only going to make it about the width of the counter space, and it is going to sit directly in between the entrance and uh, the actual area here. So, what else do we want to do? Well, we are going to grab ourselves the quartz stairs. Birch trap doors, and I'm not sure whether I like this, so I'll let you guys decide, and the quartz slabs. And uh, first, we're just going to make some cash registers. These are just going to be a couple of quartz stairs with some, like, you know, weighted pressure plates next to them. We're going to use the birch trap doors to kind of, like, create a... Oh, hang on, let's, let's place it properly. Here we go. We're placing the birch trap doors to kind of just create, like, a separation between the work environment and uh, everywhere else, pretty much. And what you can do is you can kind of like destroy the red concrete below here and you can place quartz slab underneath it. Now this is what I did in the original, but uh, I kind of actually like the red concrete a little bit more, but then I guess you can kind of like see underneath, uh, you know, it swings and roundabouts, meaning it's kind of up to you whether or not you like it. So, now that we've kind of created the entrance area, and this is where you would pay and get... I mean, you probably wouldn't have shoes here, 
really. So there, there wouldn't be too much on the background of this sign here. It really is just for uh, this back part. Now that we've created all of this space, we are now going to work on the little mini restaurant area. And uh, this requires a whole load of other materials. I've put the boots on, haven't I? I you know what? I'm going to keep them on. I don't want to, I don't want to hurt my feet. So we're going to use some red concrete for this, some white concrete, we'll need the quartz stairs again, the weighted pressure plates, we're going to be using uh, the blast furnaces, we're going to use buttons, flower pots, brewing stands, and uh, we'll, we'll leave it at that for the moment. So what we're going to do here, counting from the left of this red concrete block here, which is the divider on both sides, we want to leave a gap of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And on this seventh block here, we want to place a red concrete. Join it to the wall. Take this red concrete that you joined to the wall and extend across towards the front of the build by nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now this ninth block has to be joined and connected to the wall as well. Uh, the only thing being is you kind of want to leave a gap here so that you can get in and out. And uh, of course if you want to, I suppose that you could even have the trap door again, couldn't you? If you wanted to. Along this back wall here is going to be the cooking slash serving area and all of that. So we're going to have three white concretes coming in from both sides of, uh, of the counter space. We're going to have blast furnaces in the middle. We're going to have a couple of quartz stairs just up above them to look like extractor fans. We're going to have brewing stands and flower pots on either side. You can customize this using, uh, if you wanted to use sea pickles, that works too as cups. Uh, you can place some weighted pressure plates if you like. And on top of all of these things, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to, um, you can also place some uh, cash registers, which I make them all in the same way. It's pretty much just like quartz stairs and then way to pressure plates next to them. Um, I'm going to use buttons on these white concrete areas to look like cupboards. Uh, I'm also going to resurface the inside area here because it's kind of like a kitchen, sort of. You know, it's like an open kitchen, but whatever. Um, I'm just going to place the white concrete here just to make it look a little bit different from the rest of the environment. And on top of all of those things, if you want, you can place like a flower pot. And you could even do this on the on like the uh, front of the build as well, like here, like if you wanted to add a little bit of color. And we could put some flowers in. So this is this is like extra if you want to, you know. Um, I've, I'm really coming around to blue orchids at the moment for whatever reason. I think they're a really interesting flower. So you know, you can just add little things like that if you want, or lanterns, or you know, whatever, just to kind of like spice things up a little bit. And uh, that makes sense as we're in the kitchen. So spicy, spicy. Uh, on top of that, if you want to make the grill look a little bit more interesting, uh, a good way to achieve this always is uh, some sort of rails. Any rails will do really, but my favourites are detector rails because I, I don't know why. It kind of looks like, because it's got a centre, like it looks like a hob of some sort. So, you know, if you want to, again, spice things up in the kitchen, then you can do that. So this whole rest of the area is actually pretty simple. And I'm thinking about reflooring it, to be honest with you guys. So I reckon the first thing that we're going to do, and this isn't something that I uh, I actually um, planned on doing, but I'm going to refloor the area so that it is a bit different from the rest of, uh, of the bowling alley. So I'm going to recommend that you grab yourself some oak planks here. And I'm going to recommend that you dig out all this birch. And it's just going to make it's just going to make this area pop a little bit more. Because we've got a decent amount of exposed ground. Now it's a bit darker. We've got a decent amount of exposed ground. I reckon that the oak planks are going to come in quite handy. We may even do a similar thing over in the arcade too. Except we'll probably start off by doing that. Actually, you know what? It's actually easier in some ways to do it after the fact because then you don't have to uh, you know destroy as much of the floor if we would have started off by doing this and we would have had to have uh, made the kitchen floor separately so again you know I guess uh, it depends which way you're gonna do things but I think it's just a good way to uh, have a bit of separation Everywhere else inside of this area is simply going to be tables and they're all made in the same way but you can adjust them if you like. So basically the tables, I'm going to place them, um, loads of them pretty much, just all over the place. And the tables made out of stairs, scaffolding and red carpet but you can change the carpet. 
Um, I'm having a few tables here just in this corner and these can go this way. If you want, you can add say like a window to this wall if you want some more natural light coming in. Um, or you could add like a painting or you know whatever whatever it is that you feel as though might look good I might just keep the uh, the black stained glass pane just because uh, I think it, it just adds a nice little bit more natural light um, All the way in here we just have to jam some tables and this can be in any fashion that you want really So maybe we'll do like one here and then like a gap of two so there's a decent space between that. No, okay, we'll have a gap of one. That's what we'll do. We'll have a gap of one, and then we'll just have a load of tables. And then we'll see how, and we'll start them from this side too, and then we'll see if we can get any in the middle, which I don't think we can, which is perfectly fine. We don't have to have any in the middle whatsoever. And uh, actually, if we bring these one row inwards, then they both sit perfectly in the center right here of the counter space and then we can uh, maybe stick a, a couple more tables in here so where would we put them we'd put them probably here something like this sideways right and then scaffolding and you can make the tables and chairs more fancy you can use different designs but um if i make them all incredibly fancy out of all different things then i am never going to uh finish the tutorial because i'll be too busy spending so much time making chairs and tables and we'll never get even to like the alley so um that's the area that we've kind of sort of laid out for ourselves guys i think that that's a quite nice quite easy quite fancy looking kitchen so now that the food area is taken care of, we are going to whip our way over whoosh, over to this opposite side here. The first thing that I think I want to do here is I am going to refloor. Uh, I'm going to refloor the entire area, and the area is basically where this red concrete here is, all the way up to this wall. That's that's as simple as it is. It's, it's just in between this. Now the reason that I am doing this now instead of like filling it up a bit and then doing it later it is because we've got quite a lot of stuff in here that's like we've got like a an air hockey table for instance that would be hard to do the underneath of uh, if we waited we've got some delicate uh, arcade machines and stuff that i don't want to risk destroying as we do the floor later so i reckon it's just easier just to make some oak also bear in mind you can change the color you can make the floor white you can make it black, yellow, brown, orange, purple, like any color that you, literally any color you want to do, it really doesn't matter. Um, you can even make it a, a couple of different tones if you like. It's completely up to you. It's The only reason that I'm doing this is because there's a lot of birch floor, isn't there? Like, it's a lot of birch, but if you add a bit of oak in there, it just spruces it up. And again, I wish I was using spruce so that it, you know, that made sense with a little bit of wordplay, but hey. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to dump these materials a little bit. And I'm never going to need brewing sands. I don't know about the birch trap door. I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to dump the birch trap door. Okay, here we go. So, what are we going to need for this part? We're going to need some different colors of stuff, uh, different colors of concrete. So, I'm going to use magenta, yellow concrete and red. These can be any colors. We're going to use glass pane levers, buttons, iron bars, hoppers, and then We'll also need quartz stairs, but we will also want all sorts of different heads. So let me show you what we're going to do. The first thing that we're going to make is we are going to make some claw machines. The claw machines are dead easy. We start in the corner of the build, count forwards by one, place... I'm going to use a magenta concrete. I'm going to place a magenta. I'm going to place a hopper to the right of it, then a magenta. I'm going to extend the magentas towards us. Quartz stairs in front of the hopper upside down. We're going to have lever on the left, button on the right, so they look like controls. Directly above all of this, we're going to have a row of, or two rows of magenta directly above this area here. And this is just going to sit directly above the machine. I'm going to now, so that's kind of like the frame of it, right, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to use glass paint to fill the rest of this in. I'm going to fill the left and right sides in like this. I'm going to place an iron bar here at the top. And underneath this will be a head of some sort. So like a zombie head or whatever. But I can't place that just yet. So I want to... Now that that's kind of like the frame, I'm going to leave a gap of two, and then I'm going to do the same sort of thing, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so we have the frame, and I'm going to do the same sort of thing. 
So we're going to use yellow concrete this time. We're going to place all of the same glass and stuff. We're going to place all of the levers and the buttons. We're just leaving a gap or two, and then we're going to stick an iron bar in the middle. And you couldn't, you don't even necessarily have to use an iron bar. What you could use is perhaps an end rod. But I think iron bar, it, it just looks like a claw, doesn't it? So let's leave a gap of two and then let's do the same thing. You know what? I've got red, which is a bit boring, yeah? So why, why don't we use, say, like, I don't know, like lime green or something? So um, gap of two. And then we'll, we want to do literally the exact same thing. So uh, we're just going to have... Oh, came a bit too far. So here, here... Upside down quartz stairs, glass pane, like this, here, here, and then we want this across the top, here, here, and here, perfect, so that's kind of like the frame for all of the machines, we don't need the concretes anymore, but we do need the heads, uh, you stick the heads down at the bottom, just uh, kind of like as if it's being grabbed by the claw, I did also consider this fact too that we can add some lighting built into the machine. So if you want to do this, I mean it will it'll make it look a bit brighter. You could add some sea lanterns or glowstone or whatever um, into the top of the machines to make it a bit brighter. But once you've kind of got like the price sorted out and the claw and all of that, then you can just seal these all up using some glass pane. If you want to add some windows in between to uh, kind of like bring in more natural light, you can. So in between the arcade machines, the claw machines rather, then you can play some glass pane in the windows if you want. And it's kind of cool actually, we can kind of see out. And I believe that's the fire station there, so that's, that's kind of awesome. The next thing that we're going to make is the air hockey table. So I'm going to use some cut red sandstone slab. But you can use any any sort of colour, by the way. You don't have to use red sandstone slab. You can use any slabs that you like. We need some quartz slab. Now, that I would keep the same. And I'm going to use buttons. And we need two other butter or one other kind of button too. So, I'm thinking, since we have the red sandstone slab, an acacia button. And you'll see why I'm grabbing all of this in a second and why you can customise it. So, if we take this claw machine here, the creeper claw machine, which funnily enough I decided to make green. Um, we're going to take this corner and we're going to leave a gap of two. So between this, like one, two, we're leaving a gap of two. And then we're going to make a solid red sandstone uh, block, like a cut red sandstone block. We're going to extend it backwards, the top of it, by three. One, two, three. And then we want to form another solid block. We're going to place two rows of quartz slabs extending over from the red sandstone. Then we're going to place a red sandstone block on the ends. And then we're going to place ourselves just two rows like this. And the button that we're using, we're going to place a stone button in the middle. This is like the puck. Um, the acacia buttons that we're going to place on the end, those are like the, you know, like the things that you use to, I don't even know what you call them, the things that you use to like try and knock the puck into the holes. That's what this looks like, sort of. It's a very, very simple, rudimentary kind of, you know, air hockey table. I'm sure that you could do better. But again, if you want to, then that is uh, your prerogative. You're more than welcome to do that. I mean, you could even build up like uh, to these, like a, a little sign like above the table that like kept screaming and all sorts of stuff but this is just a simple design for a, for a reason so now that we have done that ladies and gentlemen the next thing that we have to do is we have to make three arcade machines just in this position here and believe it or not we've actually run out of the usefulness or these materials rather have run their usefulness out for us so we're going to have to dump all of these materials that we've gathered that we've spent a load of time gathering we're going to have to get rid of all of these and we are going to get some brand new ones and that doesn't mean to say that we're not going to need any that we just got rid of a little bit later on but i want to finish this particular part of the project so here are all of the materials that you are going to need to make the next part of your bowling alley. Please do make sure that you have access to all of those materials and enough of them as well before we continue. So now that we have all of that stuff, we can get this thing started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is come all the way over to here in this corner where we have the glass window area. I want to leave a gap of one around the entire machine. So I'm going to start building the first one right here. 
The arcade machines can be made out of any combination of slabs and stairs, so preferably you've got a pair and you can use any. I'm going to make the first one out of red never bricks. I'm going to begin by placing a red never brick on the ground, an upside down stair on top of it, I'm going to place a slab on top of that, extend towards me, I'm going to place an upside down red never brick stair in front of the bottom of the machine, black banner in the middle of the machine like this, hanging off of the upside down stair on top of the brick. I'm going to place item frames left and right of the upside down stair at the bottom, and then you can place whatever you like inside of the item frames as well. And that's pretty much all there is to it. You can add buttons to the side if you want, you can try and make it look a little bit fancier, but that's pretty much that for me. We're going to make a couple more of these, it's uh, preferable that we leave a gap of one. Or maybe even a gap of two might be, might be better, so I'm going to leave a gap of two here. And then the next machine I'm going to make out of prismarine. So, prismarine block, uh, an upside down stairs on top of it, slab on top of that, extend forwards, upside down stair in front of the brick at the bottom, black banner in the middle, and then I'm going to hang some item frames off the stair here with some swords inside. So now that that one's been made, we're going to make just one more. We're going to leave a gap of two again, and this time we're going to place a purple block. And we're going to place an upside down purple stairs on top of the block. It's a little bit tricky because it's out in the open. We place a purple slab on top, extend it towards us, upside down purple stairs at the bottom, a black banner in the middle, item frames on the sides, Diamond swords in the item frames Just like that. So those are a row of arcade machines really really simple to make they look exactly like them It's a shame that we can't really place anything on top of the stairs uh, Like if we could place say like a switch or something like that like it would look like controls, but uh, Unfortunately, we can't because of the banner. So uh, What else can we do? Well, we can add a little bit of red carpet to this area as well Just to kind of like polish it off a little bit. So maybe right in the middle or, I mean, where can we line it up so that it's kind of... We don't want it in the way, we just want to cover up some of the floor a little bit, so... We've got to be a tad bit strategic with this, but something like that, I don't know whether I quite like the positioning because it's a bit offset with the table, but it uh, it does just look kind of cool like that, doesn't it? And that's our arcade. That's, uh, that's pretty much a nice, simple little arcade just to decorate our bowling alley. So now we've got the entire front area taken care of. We've got the restaurant, we've kind of got like the foyer area, like where you pay and all that and get your shoes. We've got the arcade part, and that just leaves everything else, which looks massive, doesn't it? This is a massive open space, but we are certainly going to be seeing to that. So the first thing that we're going to do now is we are going to select some colours. I'm going to use lime, blue, white, yellow purple and these are backdrops for the big giant signs and advertisements and stuff and uh, the screens that you quite often get at the end of bowling alleys and we're also going to need paintings we'll need red concrete black concrete we'll also need some end rods and all sorts of other stuff too so we're going to start all the way in the back left hand corner here at the back of the build top corner and we're going to have to destroy all of these torches. These torches, unfortunately, we won't be able to use them because we need all of this wall space. So we're going to start in this corner and it's a little bit dark, isn't it? But we're just going to have to deal with it for now. We're going to place seven rows of lime concrete. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're going to separate it with a red concrete. And this is important. We're going to repeat this pattern over again. So next color, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then red concrete. I wish it wasn't so dark. And then we're going to next color, white concrete, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then red concrete, yellow concrete, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, red concrete. And then finally, we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven purple coming across. So we'll end up with a load of separations. Now, we want to extend the red concretes down to the ground, right? And we want to extend the red concretes forwards by four rows. One, two, three, four, like this. So we want to have rows of red concrete like this. We want to join them down to the ground and one, two, three, four. 
this is actually very important, and we're actually going to be able to add some light really, really soon after we've added all of these red concretes. These are basically like, this is where the pins are going to be, this is where you chuck the bowling ball down the alley. Like, these red boxes that we're kind of creating are very, very important. So, let's just place all of these, and remember, it's just rows of four extending out from the, after you connect them down, it ends up being rows of five, but they, you add rows of four to the one to make five. So, just like this, right? What I'm now going to do is I'm just going to get rid of the end rod for a second and I'm going to grab sea lantern so that we can actually light this place up. The way that I have worked here out is leaving a gap of two in the ceiling from the rows of red concretes, we leave a gap of two and then we place these sea lanterns like this, right? So, all the way extending back throughout the entire build. And this is what we are going to do for the ceiling lights like so. So, extending all the way back, all the way to the front of the build, right? We just want to have the rows of two. And if you leave a gap of two, it will work out quite nicely um, that when you get to the end, and whether or not, and it doesn't really matter where it goes to, the light, um, it will leave a gap of two between where the light stops, I do believe. So what I mean by that is you can see it leaves a gap of two here, um, where we have this red concrete, but it also leaves a gap of two against this wall. So no matter what, the light looks quite balanced, which I find is very, very important when you're doing um, doing lighting. It's nice to have lighting that's balanced, that sits center in the ceiling and uh, and all of that. I've accidentally destroyed an extra... I'll, I'll go and replace that afterwards, that's kind of annoying because my inventory is full of stuff that I need, so I can't, I can't really like swap anything out, so we've just got one more row to do, and then if you extend it from all of the red concretes, the sea lanterns in the ceiling, I have found that it's actually a nice amount of light, like it's, it's kind of a perfect amount of light in my opinion. I don't think that you need any more, I don't think you need any less other than this. We might be adding some more windows at the end and stuff like that, but you know, I think that it's actually like quite a good amount with the sea lanterns as is like this. And um, where was that block that I accidentally destroyed extra? There it is. Okay, so I can turn that now into a block of iron and then back into a sea lantern. There we go. So now we have a load of light. It's looking nice and light and lit up. These are the lanes. And what we have to do here, ladies and gentlemen, is we have to extend the colourful parts of the lanes forwards by, I do believe, by two rows. I think that we're going to do it by two. No, we're going to do it by three. We're going to do one, two, three. There we go. And we want the colourful parts to be two rows high. So you don't even really technically have to fill all the way back in here. You want the colourful part to be two rows, like this. So really, I guess that we could have... Um, I guess that we don't need those initial rows of colour, but it was just a good way to mark um, to mark it out. So we're just going to place all of the colourful part now. We're going to place all of the yellow, white, um, purple, all of that. And again, these are going to... This could be anything. This could be like a scorekeeping device. This could be like advertisements. Quite often you'll have advertisements, won't you? Um, so that's, that's what these could be. Um, I'd recommend adding uh, a load of uh, of paintings to the middles of these to make them look as though that they are, um, you know, exactly what we just described. Making it look as though that they are like advertisements or whatever you're trying to pass um, these these parts off as. So I'd actually recommend shrinking the area a bit, um, and I'd recommend adding a load of paintings just like this just across and th and literally these paintings could be anything you know you you might want to make sure that you don't get a load of repeats and stuff but i think it does just look good because I've, I've we've got so many repeats there but uh, i don't want to spend an insane amount of time making sure that they are all perfect i don't want to uh, spend loads and loads and loads and loads of time making sure that they're all different so i'm just going to leave it like that but you're probably going to want to make sure that you don't have loads of repeats, especially not next to each other, kind of like how we have done now. There are so many schools, I don't know what the odds of that is, seriously, that's crazy. So, those are the tops. You could even do this, where you could add some light to the back of the alley, you could um, add some sea lanterns, just like below here, just like that. 
Um, you could add the, yeah, as I mentioned, you could add the sea lanterns just like this, just like below, and that will keep the alleys lit up as, uh, and they are actually quite bright, aren't they? I mean, when when I'm thinking about it now, like, it is quite like a bright area, funnily enough. Despite the fact you'd imagine that it'd be dark, I guess that the pins probably have got some backlighting so that you can aim at them more effectively, I imagine. So, we've got all of these in here. Just like that. And what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to add a backdrop of black concrete right at the back, just like this. There we go. So we're going to have black concrete right at the back, and this is going to fill in all of these holes, just like this. And this is going to be where you chuck the ball into. I figure black is quite a good backdrop because it's, it's quite ominous, isn't it? So that looks quite good. Now, the next thing that we're going to do before we make all of the pins and stuff is we're going to make the dividers between the lanes. So, to do this, we're actually going to need um, a little bit of light grey concrete, some stone brick wall, and some smooth stone slabs. And we're going to extend from all of the red concrete areas in between the separate uh, separative parts. We're going to dig a row of 14 in the ground. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And we're going to place light grey concrete in this space instead. So, light grey concrete inside of this empty space. And we want these in between all of the lanes. Now, you only have to do this where you have the red concrete parts of the lanes. You don't have to do it when you reach the ends because, of course, there's a solid wall there. So, there's no, you know, there's no need whatsoever. So, you can have all of these. And then we're going to stick smooth stone slabs on the ends of the light grey concretes. And then we're going to place stone brick wall. Just like this. We're going to have stone brick wall here extending from the smooth stone slabs and it's going to join the red concrete like this so these are going to act as again it's going to be a solid uh, a solid divider between all of the lanes like that perfect but addition in in addition to that what we also want to do is we want to make the gutters now gutters are what the ball falls into if you if it like falls left or right of the lane right so uh, the gutters are basically just going to be you're going to dig out the entire area here and uh, on the left and right side of each lane every single lane will have these and that is where the ball should fall in fall into if uh, you mess up so um, we can place, I mean, we could even, we also probably want to get rid of this birch here. We probably want to turn this black as well, because of course, uh, if the ball falls into these, ultimately it falls down into there and then it will come back up here somewhere and it will get spurted out here, the ball will, and, um, that's, that's how it goes. So let's, uh, let's add all of the smooth stone slab portions and then perhaps we can make, uh, the lanes look a little bit better with the light gray concrete and of course the blacks at the end. So. That's what we're going to have to do to every single lane. It keeps us very busy, this bowling alley. I, we were making great progress at the start of this. We were knocking out portions of the bowling alley left and right. But now we've got to the part where we have to put in, uh, put in a little bit more time and effort. But it's absolutely worth it when you do get to the end of this build and you do have a nice, fully completed bowling alley. And what is cool about this build is the fact that we don't just have the bowling alley, of course. We do have the other things that one might expect to find at a bowling alley. And um, you're more than welcome, of course, to add more and more to it. Uh, you you can change around things as as you see fit. But um, that's uh, this is how we've got things laid out. So right at the end here, we want to have... There we go. We want to have the gutter. Perfect. And you're just going to find that it's more towards the ends. And I'm just going to uh, move the black and the grey closer together here. Um, it's just more towards the ends here. We just want to, like... Add in the grey and then the black just right and where the where the gutter kind of like meets. So like here and here and here. Just like this. And also here and here. I think that we that might be it because except for the black concrete on this one, yeah. Because uh, if you do one, it actually works on both sides, of course. So it's just a nice way to kind of like clean it all up. That's that's looking pretty good. 
the next thing that I want to do is I want to just create a... Uh, I want to use iron bars for this, the black concrete, and I just need... Oh, I didn't place them. And uh, the painting here. And I'm just going to have the little TV. So, uh, you know how sometimes you've got like a TV that keeps score? Sometimes it's at the end of the aisle. Sometimes it's like a little, uh, little box on the ground. Sometimes it's like up above. Well, I'm just going to make uh, some of the like the scorekeeping devices. So, basically, in between every single aisle here, not in the middle of them, in between the aisles where we have the smooth stone and the wall and everything, I'm just going to place, coming down from the first block of iron from the sea lantern, I'm going to place an iron bars. And that is going to be true for all of the middles of the lanes. I want to place black concretes underneath the iron bars like this. And I want to place paintings where are in front of the black concrete. So again, I don't particularly want to have repeats. We've only got one repeat this time, which is good. So no, come on. There we go. Perfect. Uh, additionally, you could place if you wanted to say like signs and you can keep score and stuff, but um, that that's basically just like the actual digital version instead of uh, anything else. And the reason that I destroyed the iron bars is because that will happen. Um, the iron bars will actually uh, allow the painting to grip. And now I've got a repeat, haven't I? I'm going to leave that. It was perfect, but I, I ruined it, didn't I? But those are all of the uh, those are the alleys, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the lanes. So now that we've done all of that, we are going to make some seating. And then we can make where the balls are stored and all of that fun stuff. So to make the seating, red concrete, quartz stairs, oak wood slabs. That's what we're going to start off with. The seating is going to be positioned, there's only four seats. It's going to be as wide as the smooth stone and all of that. It's going to be five rows away. We want to leave a gap of five between like the middles of the alleys, like one, two, three, four, five. And we want to have a row of three red concrete like this. So like it wants to be as wide as this middle part here. You leave a gap of five and you want to have this present along the alley so it wants to be all the way down just like this we want to have all of the red concretes we're going to extend the middle red concretes backwards by four one two three four and then we're going to extend the middle uh, we're going to extend that block outwards left and right so we're basically it looks like a load of capital i's that we've got here all the way down like this and we're going to place quartz stairs on both sides of the red concrete. So we're going to have some seating like this. And we're also, once we have placed all of these seats, we're going to place oak wood slabs just to get on the ends, like coming across like this, just because I think it adds a little bit of shape to the area a little bit. There's actually no other reason. I think it just adds a little bit of shape. Um, so add those or don't, it's, uh, it's completely up to you. And what else do we have to do to this area as well? We actually need, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be hopefully, I do say hopefully, the third and final iteration of our item list. Now we have to make, now that we've got all these seats, we have to add detail to these seats a little bit. We have to grab some bowling balls, we have to make some racks, and we have to refloor a little bit. But that is going to be the last thing that we have to do. And of course, we might also add some more uh, windows around as well. So, I'm going to get rid of all of this. All of this has to go. And we will need to grab all of these materials that I am now showing you on the screen right now. So please do make sure that you have access to all of these items that I'm now showing you on the screen. Make sure you got all of those and enough of them. And once you do have them all, we can get cracking. So now that we have all of this stuff, ladies and gentlemen, we can continue on. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we are going to just place some cups along the middle of the seating area. So you can use flower pots for this, or as always, you can also use some sea pickles. They look really cool as cups as well. Behind the middle of every seating area, I want to have a potted plant. This begins by placing a terracotta behind all of the middles of the areas. We want to have flower pots on top of the terracottas, like this. I want to use a dead bush in all of the flower pots because it looks like a good like middle of a plant. 
And then I like to use leaves, any leaves will do really, above the dead bush. And it just looks like a cool, quite natural looking, realistic looking plant. And we just have those going all the way down like this. Well, what else can we do? Well, we have to make the, like, the ball return. I don't know what better thing to call it, really. So this is basically going to be two rows away from every single seating area. And it's going to be as long as the seating areas. And basically, it starts with an upside-down stair two rows away. We place four polished and sight slabs extending outwards from the upside down stair one two three four you turn the third slab into an upside down polished and sight stairs you place a regular polished and sight stairs on the end and basically this is the thing that like spits the ball out back at you once you have like you've chucked it and it comes back towards you so what else are we going to be doing? So we have to add bowling balls to this as well. Um, you, we can add two now, but we're going to make all of these racks first. So the bowling balls can be made out of any colour of concrete or terracotta or whatever you like. And uh, I'd suggest just chucking a stone button on them, just like this. And we're going to place these racks all the way down. Now, I wouldn't recommend filling them all up with black and grey concretes because you can get different colours of balls. But uh, I just did that for that first one just as a display. So we want to make all of these racks, ladies and gentlemen. They all want to be the exact same. You may want to vary, perhaps. Uh, you, you're just going to want to vary where the balls go, the different colours of balls. Where you decide to put the balls as well and where one might put the uh, the stone button on the balls too so like there is quite a little bit to think about really um, when it comes to the bowling balls I have also noticed that we haven't actually done the lanes but that's okay because we can come back to uh, we can come back to the lanes we didn't quite finish them off but that is actually perfectly fine so let's place this here and uh, yeah, and, and we can leave that one like that. Because as I mentioned, I want all sorts of different colours of balls. It's quite tempting just to, for easiness sake, just to make them all like black and grey. But uh, I want different coloured ones. So um, we've got all of the all of the uh, like the ball returns done now. So we can chuck all of these away. We will be needing the and site and polished and site again though. And we're just going to use, let's use all different colours now. So buttons and then literally just grab a load of colours of concrete and stuff and uh, you're just going to want to vary where you put these. So you're probably going to want to keep them like two blocks away from each other but maybe not as well. And uh, you can fill like the entire rack up if you do so choose, right? And uh, you know, the balls kind of all sit a bit differently, don't they? Like um, you know, it, it, sometimes you've got to uh, you've got to find uh, the actual holes on them sometimes. So um, you don't have to all they don't the buttons don't always have to be on the top and stuff. And it just looks a little bit more interesting and a little bit more colourful. Something else that you might choose to do is add some to the lanes. So what I mean by that is like if you want to make it look as though some balls are like going down the lanes, then you you might want to do that. It might be a little bit of a silly idea, perhaps considering the fact that nobody's on the lanes or nobody's chucking the balls. But I mean, you could just you know just for a representation, or you could maybe put some in the gutters. That might be kind of funny as well, actually. So maybe like we've got a gutter ball down here, for instance, you know, or maybe like uh, where, where else haven't we done it? So maybe like over here, maybe we've got like a gutter ball, um, or not. You know, again, these are these are all just choices. Uh, I do actually want to complete the lanes before I continue on now that I've noticed that the lanes are incomplete. My bad, my bad. I'm not perfect, am I? So all we've got to do to complete the lanes, we just need end rods and we just need some quartz slabs. And that's pretty much all we're going to be using, right? End rods and quartz slabs. So, um, end rods are basically just going to look like the bowling pins. And luckily you can place them together like this, and it looks quite good. Um, I want to add, uh, the, the thing that clears the pins, you know, that big, like, metal thing that, like, comes down, it clears the pins that you don't manage to hit. Uh, I'm going to use quartz slabs for this, just because it's quite a nice colour. And that is going to be how you make the lanes. Now, how you make them is kind of up to you. You can add... Like, uh, you can change the formation of the, some of the pins. You could make it so that some of the pins are kind of, like, on their sides. You could even use, like, perhaps some quartz slab to kind of, like... Uh, and, by the way, like...
you could also uh, position the uh, the thing differently too. So what I mean by that is you can position the I don't know what to call it. The, the the thing that like comes down and it break like smashes all the pins down. Like you can change that. Um, so again, like you know, it's it's kind of up to you how you want to set things out. You know, but you, you you're going to want to do it in all sorts of different ways. It might be that you kind of have it like set out like you know like this. I'd I'd just make it all a little bit random. I'd make it so uh, that it makes sense the positioning where the again I don't know what to call it the the thing that comes in like you know uh, clears up all of the pins like you know you you're just gonna want to like mess about with it the position of it and you know uh, where you put the bowling pins and whether some have fallen over and all of that stuff you know. And now that we have uh, done all of that, ladies and gentlemen, we can now focus on the racks. Like, these are going to be between the seating area and the playing area and, like, the rest of the building. And these are basically, very, very simply, these are going to be polished and in sight and polished and in sight, sli polished and in sight stairs and polished and in sight slabs. And they are going to be positioned, like, right here. Let me show you. So, they actually want to be right about here you want to leave a gap of one between the plant the stair wants to basically just sit like here almost like it's kind of weird to explain right so they're kind of like they're the width of the lane the birch part of the lane and they want to just be in between all of these areas so like here can you see where they're positioned like they're the width of the space in between all of these seating areas and basically all these are for is uh, they're, they're four extra bowling balls that's that's pretty much it this is where you're going to get your extra bowling balls from because you know the the people uh, the people that run the bowling alley they of course don't know um how many people are going to be showing up at any given time you know you could have many different sizes of party so um just right here we'll have all sorts of different kinds of bowling balls different uh, different um uh, sh different sizes and weights and all of that. So, to make these, it's the same thing as we've done before. Load of different colors, basically. You know, you can really load these up if you want, like this, or you can just have a few sparsely thrown around. It, it really doesn't matter because it's all personal, um, all personal choice. And you're just going to want to, uh, as I mentioned just place the buttons and it is also possible by the way for the buttons to be on the bottom of the ball too so you don't have to worry necessarily about even placing one whatsoever because it could actually the it could be sat on the holes so to speak so yeah ladies and gentlemen you know we're, we're really coming towards the end here where we've we've got something that looks really really cool uh the last two modifications that i might make is i might add some more windows and i might also separate the lanes a little bit so uh i figure i'm going to place i yeah i'm going to refloor the lanes so i'm going to make the space in between the seats so basically right from the front part of the seats all the way to the back part of these racks i'm going to destroy all of this and I'm going to turn it into oak planks. Now, this is something... Now, th th here's a good example of what we should have done earlier, really. In, in essence, it is a bit easier because we have less to actually, like, destroy and replace. Because, you know, we've got a lot of the ground covered. But in reality... It's harder because we've now got to like dig around all of this stuff and we've got to make sure that we've not destroyed anything. But I think it's a good change to make despite the fact that it's a little bit annoying because I think I'm going to do all the destroying first and then all the filling in after. Um, it's a little bit... Um, I think it's good to have, instead of the whole floor being birch, as I've mentioned, I like the idea of this particular part of the floor just being a tad different. If you wanted to make it a little bit easier on yourself, I mean, perhaps you wouldn't have to destroy underneath the uh, the back racks. The middle ones you would, but the back racks, I mean, you could probably quite easily leave alone if you wanted to. And again, this is all personal preference anyway. You know, you don't have to uh, make this change whatsoever if you don't want to. So, 
uh, you can just kind of like leave it as is. So uh, here, destroy all of this. How much more have we got to do? Oh, we, we are getting there. We're getting there. It's okay. This is the worst part of it, the hardest part of it, I should say. I shouldn't say worst because it's not like it's a horrible thing to do. It's uh, it's just a little time consuming and a little bit uh, delicate, you know, but um, all in all, once we have done this, we will have a nice finished bowling alley once we've added a couple more windows. I know exactly where I'm going to add them to. We could add them along the lanes, by the way, like on the left and right side if we wanted to, but... Um, there's something about that I just don't like the idea of. I don't know what it is, but uh, yeah, okay, so I'm going to fill all of this back part in here using the oak wood, and that went very smoothly, actually. I'm, I'm quite surprised at how smoothly this that went, and I'm going to also fill in underneath the little rack portion, too, so here. So under basically just underneath all of the half blocks being the stairs and the, the slabs, it's just going to be a little bit trickier here. And then here as well just like that perfect and uh, yeah this is this is just gonna look good I can't believe that we are going to be done after this as well I uh, it, it feels as though that we've we've put a lot of work into this I think it's because there's a lot of variety in this place it's not just like the the inside serves just one particular purpose it's like it's really split up into complete different parts I mean if you game here you could just hit the arcade if you wanted to you know you wouldn't have to hit the uh, just the alleys like I think it's uh, it's really quite a diverse build and I think that that's what makes it uh, one of uh, one of the cooler interiors so yeah that's looking pretty good and you you can just just see now like it's it just the way that it's separated it just looks a little bit better um if you want you can add windows and i'm going to just on the sides now these are going to be between the racks here and the front of the build so it's just going to be a three row wide window um just in the middle like this like here and here using some black stained glass pane as i mentioned you could add some more of the sides of the lanes but i'm, I'm actually going to leave it like that and Ladies and gentlemen, we've kind of done the whole thing. We've kind of like built the entire inside of our bowling alley. Very well done. So once we have completed our interior, we will have a fully completed, fully functioning bowling alley with all sorts of other cool stuff inside of it as well. So as we enter the front door, we have of course completed this little, for a lack of a better term, airlock area. We have the counter here where we pay for our stuff, for our shoes, for the lanes, all of that. We have a restaurant area where we can get drinks and all of that sort of stuff. We have on the opposite side here, we have a little mini arcade, which is nice and colorful. We have all sorts of racks to hold the bowling balls. We have the kind of like the ball return area. We have all of this seating. We have uh, like digital scorekeeping. We have all of these lanes, which have the same sort of thing, all nicely decorated with advertisements and color and the bowling balls are kind of like midway down all of the lanes and some of the pins are knocked out and we have different formations it's all really really pulled together and that's it ladies and gentlemen i do hope that you guys have enjoyed this tutorial if you have please do remember to subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and you haven't already click that little bell next to the subscription button and that'll ensure that you get all of my videos sent directly to your sub box if you would like to make any more city builds by me check out the card system description below and the top of the comment section that is the best place to find all of those things thank you so much for watching everybody i love you all very very much and i'll see you guys in the next one goodbye